I've had some time, I've had some time to process, time does heal. Watch out for snakes, Bubba. All right guys, so I just made it over here to the farm, let Elo out, he's going crazy. He's sprinting around like a maniac, so he's probably gonna do that for a while. Here he comes. Um, anyway, so I'm thinking uh, I'm just gonna kinda hang out here in the front yard and chit chat with you guys because, yeah. a big old copperhead right up over there the other day. Here, here. Come here. Farmhouse blanket talk with Little Red. <laughs> so, uh, I feel like there's a lot that you guys probably, well, on Instagram I shared the news about Frankie, um, but I feel like in order to kind of tell the whole story, I need to start from the beginning. So obviously this past summer, you guys have noticed that I was not at the beach a lot, like at all. So, hey, are you going to come over here now? I knew you would. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys could tell that I was not at the beach a lot this summer and I really kind of didn't get to fish at all. I didn't get to use the boat. I wasn't at my beach house, blah, blah, blah. There were um, a lot of things that kind of kept me here in Virginia. And I honestly just never really made it back down to the beach. So, um, which really sucked. Like I, the Outer Banks will always have a place in my heart. Like I love the beach. When I came to the farm, um, last fall i obviously had no intention of leaving the beach leaving the outer banks for good i wanted to have a place in the mountains here and a place at the beach and so i could saltwater fish and use my boat that i'd just gotten um and life was extremely happy i was i was feeling like i was living out my passion to the fullest so when kind of I got so caught up with everything here in the mountains and I just, I just didn't get back down to the beach. I didn't get to my beach house and I didn't get to use my boat. So, um, when I finally did make it back down there, um, obviously towards the end of the summer, I realized that, you know, I'm not using this house. Um, I'm not using this boat and to be honest it had a lot of bad memories there from my stalker situation and stuff like that. I never really felt the same after that happened to me. I never really felt safe in that house. It had a lot of bad energy and bad memories from that. Um, also the house was not very private at all. Like I love, I loved all the people there around my house, but literally I lived in a marina restaurant parking lot, which was pretty cool in the beginning. Um, it was a lot of fun, but after a while, especially when I share my life online with all of you guys, um, going home is amazing to feel like you have privacy you can kind of just turn off like social and turn off being watched or just being public at all. You can turn that off when you go home. I didn't really have that because it was a tourist destination. It was a, a, a business right there next to my house. Like I was right on the water with, with the marina. And like I said, I loved all the people that worked there and lived there, but it was just it was a lot of chaos all the time, not really somewhere where I felt like I could have privacy and alone time and stuff like that. So anyway, long story short, I just felt like it was time for me to move on from that house. Um, 
I can finally share with you guys now where I lived. I definitely will always go back to this little town. It's a town called Juan Chis in North Carolina. It's maybe less than 10 minutes from Nags Head. Um, so yeah, it's a little fishing village. Uh, nicest people ever. Everyone just fishes. It's, it's awesome. It was a dream, dream place, but just, um, terrible situation that happened to me while I was there that kind of soured, especially that house and then the lack of privacy thing in that particular location. But, um, I met a lot of really cool people, great people that I'll have as friends forever and I'll never forget that chapter in my life. Maybe eventually um, wander back there and, and live there again someday. But another big thing that kind of made me um, decide to pick a state for right now because I was balancing between bouncing between Virginia and North Carolina and I thought that was going to be doable. I thought it was going to be great. But I was trying to figure out where I'm going to live here. You guys saw me live in this farmhouse over the winter with my mom. And um, we're trying to fix it up and everything. Hey, mom. Stuff in North Carolina, stuff in Virginia, stuff at the farm, stuff here, there, everywhere. Ew, you're wet. You're a wet boy. So, yeah, that was another thing. Just kind of feeling like I needed some structure in my life. And... Um, so I felt like I needed to decide where I was spending more time and in the moment it was here in Virginia. So I decided to move all my stuff out of that house in Wanchies. It was so sad. And here's where things got even sadder. So I decided to go down there and get all my stuff packed up in a U-Haul and it, I was gone for maybe three to four days to do that. My mom went with me. Elo went down there to the beach with me. I thought um, Frankie, you know, Frankie would probably be better off just staying at my parents' house up here in Virginia while I did the move because it was just going to be chaos and him going in and out the door and all this stuff. So um, I left him at my parents' house and my dad was kind of watching after him. I mean, Frankie's super easy to take care of. You just make sure the food bowl's full, the water bowl, give him some attention, and he's he's such a chill cat. Day two, my dad calls and he says, Frankie's not acting normal. Frankie's just kind of laying around. And I was like, well, what do you mean? Like, you know, is he eating? Is he drinking? And blah, blah, blah. And, you know, my dad just kind of didn't think it was that serious. So, um... I said, okay, just keep an eye on him, make sure he's okay. I, I figured I'd see him in three or four days. So I drive all the way home after packing up the U-Haul. I had to, had to tow that U-Haul trailer, uh, I think almost 400, I don't know, 400 or more miles, which was intense. And I remember the whole way back to Virginia, I was telling Elo in the car, oh, we're gonna get to see Frankie soon. Can't wait to go see her brother, Frankie. <laughs> And, uh, so I get to my parents' house to go see Frankie. Elo goes inside. I'm hollering, Frankie, we're here. He's usually right there at the door to greet me, always, with maybe a little bite, but a little love bite. Um, so anyway, he didn't come. He didn't come to the door. And so I saw my dad. He says hi and everything, and was talking to him and I you know he's he's not really saying much and I keep asking where's Frankie and he kept trying to avoid the question I'm like dad where is Frankie and he said Frankie's dead and I said what like it it Supposedly, Frankie had passed away uh, two days before that. So on day two of me being gone, Frankie had just passed away. So obviously, I'm literally on the floor at this point, devastated. Like, are you serious? Like, how? 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 How could this happen? What happened? Like... Of course, I never blamed my dad. I know my dad wouldn't have done anything. My dad wouldn't have neglected Frankie. Everyone loved Frankie and my family. 
and he was a family member. What my dad did do though is he took Frankie, um, he took Frankie to a crematory where he actually had them freeze Frankie's body so that when we got back we could take him to get an autopsy to see what had actually caused his death. And so we did, we took him to Virginia Tech to get an autopsy done and it came back that Frankie had a urinary blockage. I've never heard of this before. Um, the doctor said that, the vet, the veterinarian said that it's pretty common in male cats and that when it happens, they usually die within 24 to 48 hours. It's a very painful death and there's really nothing you can do about it to help unless you catch it when it's, when they're really young or Early on, sometimes you can put a catheter in them and get the blockage to pass, but that's only so effective. So there's really no like warning signs, there's no cure, and it's very fast that it happens. So I'm like, it's just, it's just wild to me. Um, it's heartbreaking. Obviously, like I said, some time has passed. So I've been able to kind of get a grip on it, but oh my gosh, you guys have no idea. After the heartbreak of moving, leaving the beach for a while, and then having Frankie pass away, um, had a pretty terrible relationship end as well during all of that, but really that was like the least of my worries because, I mean, my whole life was just like changing and falling apart and like one thing after the other was just like, bam, 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 just stab, stab, stab. And I'm like, what, what do I do? Um, so the only thing I could do was just keep going, you know, just keep, try to find some, some light in the situation. Um, you know, in a way I am, I really think Frankie was an angel that was brought into my life. If you guys remember, um, Elo found Frankie in my yard down there in Wanchis at the beach. He's like this big. He was a super tiny little kitten. And they were best friends. Elo and Frankie were best friends. Weren't you both? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she were. They were best, best friends. And um, they grew up together. Because Elo was kind of a puppy, puppy stage. Maybe six months when he found Frankie. And... Frankie was only two years old when he passed, and Elo is about two and a half now. So, huh, it was extremely hard on Elo. I felt it was uh, necessary to show Elo Frankie's um, body before the autopsy, and that was I, I I had to bring myself. It took me a long time to even be able to open the box and see him. Oh, it was terrible, but I'll tell you, he was the most beautiful, beautiful cat. He looked so peaceful. I remember Frankie would, it was one of my favorite things he did. He was such a jokester, a prankster. Like, he really did have a sense of humor, like a human. It was hilarious. He was the coolest cat. He'd go on the beach. He'd, he wasn't afraid of the ocean, the water. He would go on every adventure that... I would take Frankie and Elo everywhere. So one thing though that he did in the mornings that I still think about every morning and I miss it so much. So I would get up in the morning to, and the first place I'd go is to the bathroom to pee. And he, I would pretend like I didn't see him, but he would jump into the shower. <laughs> oh, there's a persimmon. He'd jump into the shower and I'd pretend like I didn't see him. And then would walk out of the bathroom and uh, Frankie would jump out of the shower and like grab latch onto my leg. And like I would pretend like I was so afraid, like he really got me, like it was I was so scared. <laughs> and he loved that. You could genuinely see like he got a thrill or like a kick out of scaring people and specifically me. It was he was the cutest, the coolest cat. And I find it very... I don't know, kind of soothing in an odd, weird way. Obviously, I wish that I could have had an eternity with Frankie, but um, I think he really brought a lot of life to my life and to Elo's life. And 
where Elo found him and ew Elo, you're so dirty and disgusting. Come here. Come here. Come show them. Ew. You guys, this dog is so dirty. He just got down in the creek. Oh, he stinks. You crazy boy. Uh-uh. I don't want your ball. Good boy. Um, you know, there are a bunch of feral cats down there in Wanchies. And... <laughs> Do you want to be a part of the story? Yes. You tell them that you miss Frankie. I know. I know, Bubba. It's okay. I miss him too. Um, what was I going to say? They, they live down there in this fishing village that I was telling you guys about. So, there's tons of ferals down there, and I think that they're the most unique cats that ever lived. When I close that chapter of my life, not permanently, but for now, maybe his spirit decided to stay there. You know, his spirit will forever live on there. I don't know how to explain it, but I just thought that it was kind of... It's like I was I was closing that chapter of my life there and that was that was part of him. So, so when when I let Elo see Frankie's um Frankie's body before they did the autopsy um I wasn't sure how I was going to react when I saw him. I wasn't sure how Elo was going to react, but I did feel like it was necessary to let Elo know what had happened so he could have closure because otherwise he would have maybe still just be wondering what happened to Frankie, where is he, is he missing? Um, you know, he needed to know. And so I showed Elo Frankie and um, Elo smelled him for a few minutes and he looked up at me and you could just see something kind of clicked in him. Like he understood. He was very sad. I could tell he 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 looked at me and then he turned. He turned away. Like he he had lost his best friend. It was awful. Gosh. I loved Frankie to death. You guys know that from my videos. But to see him hurting over it was was just terrible, terrible. But on a brighter note, you guys, <laughs> on a brighter note, while I was down at the beach for my cousin's wedding a couple weeks ago, I made a trip to Wanchies and I tried my hardest to find a kitten um, from the same group that Frankie came from. They're all related, really, because they, they like, interbreed and stuff. It's not good, but like I said, they're the coolest cats, and, um, I did, I found a kitten. <laughs> Let me introduce you guys. guys I found a kitten <laughs> there she is the story on this kitten is so cute and um, obviously I know that this kitty will never be Frankie obviously looks nothing like him um, that's not what matters come here baby Okay, let me tell you guys the story on this little baby right here. She's so tiny. So I don't have a real name for her picked out yet. I was thinking Millie, I'm not really sure. And she's so tiny that <laughs> I did take her to the vet and um, they think that she's a girl, pretty sure. She's so little, it's hard to tell right now. But so the story was, obviously I went to Wanchi's to 
um, find a kitten. And like I said, they're all related over there. Like they're Frankie's kinfolk, 100%. Most of them look just like Frankie, but there have been some black cats kind of mixing in lately. So, um, yeah, so I go over there. I'm trying to capture these cats. I'm feeding them, giving them water. They're like coming out of bushes and ditches and all sorts of places. And most of the time they sleep all day long there and then they'll come out like right before dark or at night. So I was like a lunatic over there at nighttime trying to rescue one of these feral kittens. I had gotten really close one night and then things just didn't happen. The kittens were like so fast and the moms were like not having it. They didn't want their babies stolen obviously. So uh, no luck and it was like the last night that I had at the beach to try. I remember before we went, it was like a huge rainstorm that had hit the beach, like a massive rainstorm. And um, so everything was kind of like wet, the ditches were flooded and everything like that. So we're leaving, we're pulling out on the road, I'm in the Jeep, my mom stops in the middle of the road and she says, there's a kitten in the road, there's a kitten right there. So I, I didn't see it, but I got out of the Jeep, it's pitch black outside, the road's wet, I see this like little creature in the road. Obviously she's black, so she's like blending right in with the asphalt. And she, all I can see are these like little eyes like looking up at me and she's in the middle of the road. So I'm thinking, and she was like laying there all weird. So I was thinking she had gotten hit by a car and I immediately like started panicking, freaking out because why wouldn't this kitten be running? You know, why is it just like laying here all weird in the road? Oh my God. And it looked wet, like there was a shadow around her. The road was wet, it looked, I thought she was in a pile of blood, I don't know. It was, I had a freak out moment. I just did all I could think to do. I wrapped her up in my arms, picked her up. I felt the wetness, I thought it was blood, but when I got in the car, the lights came on and I could see that it was just water from the rain. And she wasn't, she wasn't crawling away or running away because she couldn't really walk very well. I don't have any footage from that night, unfortunately. Um, I wish I had have taken some. This was maybe like a week and a half ago now. But I wish I had taken some footage of her when we found her because she was so skinny and just something was wrong. Like I thought something was wrong with her because she couldn't walk her back legs were like spreading outward. She was so skinny and she just couldn't walk. I mean, she was a wobbly little mess. Like she was dragging her back legs and everything. I thought for sure something was wrong with her. And I was like, I don't care as long as she's healthy and she's not in pain, like it's not an injury. She will be mine and we will deal with a little bow leggedness or a little, you know, if she's a special needs kitty, that's fine. <laughs> like I can handle that. Come here. Oh, and Elo is like, oh, <laughs> so Elo loves the kitten, he really does, but the kitten is kind of afraid of Elo, just because of the size difference, I think, right now, but I see the potential there, I think they're gonna get along just fine, but seriously, you guys, um, this kitten was so fragile and just emaciated um it was it was terrible when i when i found this kitten she was she was really not in a good spot i don't know if she would have survived really so anyway i've just been feeding her tons of food as much as she wants to eat tons of water safe place to live she cuddles with me at night and we do some adventures together she's getting to know elo and I've seen a drastic improvement. Like her legs are functioning normally. Um, she only weighed like one pound when I took her to the vet maybe four days ago. But she's gaining more and more weight every day. And she's getting stronger and more playful. She's coming out of her shell a lot. Come say hi. Come say hi to the wolf pack. <laughs> Ugh. Get that dirty boy ball away from me. <laughs> See, she's a little bit afraid of Elo, but she's coming around.
he was actually the same way with Frankie. Like, if I gave Frankie a lot of attention or if Frankie was playing with something and Elo wanted it, it was, that's just how Elo is. But I think they're going to get along great together. And honestly, this little kitty looks like it could be Elo's baby. <laughs> Ew, get that ball away from me, Bungie. I don't want it. You're so dirty. Ew, gross. But yeah, guys, could you please help me come up with a name for this little kitten? On and on. I'm driving in my car, the road is long and full of dust. The landscape changes around me, on and on, I feel I must. Whatever happened to me, happened for my highest good. I read that in so many books, now it's almost understood I'm moving on and on On and on I'm moving on and on On and on See Destination. If you're looking to begin, then look no further than within. I'm satisfied with what I've got and still eager for more. The change that you've been looking for will come knock on your door. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So long story short, I've been going through a lot and I'm trying to keep going. I'm trying to push, push forward, stay strong, keep positive, um, you know, realize that terrible things do happen, but we can't really find reason for them. But um, God always has a plan. That is what keeps me going. Getting this off of my chest is going to help me move forward in my projects, my hunting, which I'm so excited about. It's coming. Um, I do have my boat still. It's up here with me in Virginia, so I can't wait to take it to a bunch of lakes and fish and um, also take it back down in the Outer Banks. Um, we're now over 200,000 subscribers. I love you guys so much. All right, I'm going to stop rambling now. I will see you guys in the next one.